Jane McCall and the Twilight Stacks. Chapter 3. The List. Jane woke up with a gasp and curled an arm around her stomach. The scar there itched something fierce. Her head still hurt, though not as badly, and the aura remained. Her ankle ached, too. The dislocation her aunt had inflicted on her had been serious, and the damage to her tendons and ligaments had left the joint weak and stiff. Probably why I tripped while in the dream, she thought. She paused. Remembering a dream was unusual for her. Sometimes she could recall a detail or two for a few minutes, but they faded with waking. This one remained sharp. The idea instilled in her a sense of urgency. She tumbled out of the closet, almost squishing Jess. The pup had been scratching at the door and whining. When Jane fell out, she was met by a barrage of slobbery kisses to the face. She petted the silky fur and patted her head before getting to her feet. Jess nudged her away from the closet by poking her calves with her cold, wet nose and blocking Jane with her body. Jane indulged the puppy's herding instincts and let herself be led to the living room. Once Jane was where Jess wanted, sitting on the right side of the couch, the dog hopped up next to her, arranged herself with her head and front paws over Jane's legs, and fell asleep. Jane's hand splayed over Jess's side, and she picked her journal and pen off the coffee table. She scribbled down as many elements of her dream as she could think of. When she finished, she looked at her list. Hallway, overturned shelves, all directions. Age, ruin, rot. Return the favor, Jane. Pages on the ground. Nisadie, Cyrus. Keep them out safe. Lost, stolen object needs returning. Pull forward. Screaming voices. Something needs help. The final point was traced over three times and underlined twice, since it was the main point. She considered it for a moment, then added, Familiar? Something about the dream seemed like she'd had it before. She couldn't recall how or when, but the situation was tugging on a thread she hadn't realized was there until the dream had triggered it. The sensation unsettled her. She stroked Jess's fur and fiddled with her ear. The pup had decided that Jane was her human about two minutes after meeting her, never mind how Jane and her dad took turns feeding her and her mom was the one to take her on walks. She attached herself firmly to Jane's ankles whenever possible and cried when they were separated by a door. Jane mostly let her do as she pleased. It was a great comfort to have the dog nearby, though she hated to admit it. Jess had simple demands and gave love easily. She never asked questions Jane couldn't or didn't want to answer. She didn't come with any mysteries, either. Speaking of mysteries, Jane looked back at her journal. Once the dog's nap was over, Jane would do some research into dream symbolism. Something was funny here, and she was going to find out what. Queries, kudos, or concerns? Like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> Thanks for watching.